learned over the years that there's an intimate relationship between people, their purpose, and the places where they live and work. I like to call these the three Ps. Now, this relationship is both physical and metaphysical, and it's really worth exploring. Um, it's a relationship that uh, was really central, I believe, in ancient wisdom and understood as the foundation on which to build thriving societies. So if we want to contribute to a thriving society, we ourselves have to thrive. So what do I mean by the three P's of people, purpose and place? Well, firstly, you obviously have a unique personality, a personhood comprised of your body, mind and soul. And then you have a sole purpose, which you bring to life through your creations, achievements. And thirdly, you do this from the places where you live and work. In other words, it's all about doing the right thing in the right place at the right time. And I think this is a key thing that we um, kind of lose sometimes in the manifesting and creative world when we want to create something, whether it be a business or an idea we want to bring to life, we can sometimes lose the importance of place. I think of the three P's at their core as really nested energy ecologies. They are interdependent and yet together, they and yet woven together and they create something much bigger than the sum of their three parts. The three P's are a generative and creative partnership that enables the energy blueprint of both the physical and non-physical concepts to be birthed into the 3D world. So I might have an idea for a business. It may reflect my soul person. I physically have to take action. I have to sit down and do the work. I have to work out what this business wants to become, but how will it reflect my sole purpose? How will it embody the values that I hold dear? How will it serve those people that I believe that I can help? And how to actually do that from somewhere. So I want to make sure that I'm in a place that's going to support that business. If it was a physical business, there would be no point in me opening a bikini shop on top of a Himalayan mountain. It's just, you know, so place is really important just on a practical level but also on an esoteric level, there's an energy blueprint written into places and that supports certain functions. So put simply, you know, you're a person with goals and dreams that stem from your soul purpose. Your soul needs you to transform this purpose from a desire into something tangible that makes an impact in the real world. As I say, you may have a sole mission to bring joy to the world through your unique personhood and character and music you may decide is the mechanism for doing that, say, through which you can feel you can do this. You can bring joy to the world. I feel a call to make music. I am a musician at heart. You can't possibly hope to achieve this unless you learn how to compose, to sing or to play an instrument. This is the action that you need to take. And this music then would be unique to you. It would be your soul music. Becoming a musician is the embodiment of your soul's purpose. You cannot be a musician without a body because you need to play an instrument or sing. And music cannot be created without your body, mind and soul as the driving force behind it. And then this is where the third P or place comes into the equation. You have to live somewhere and you have to be able to reach your audience while you're doing your soul's work of being a musician. And you need to be in the right place to accomplish this to maximum effect. If you lived in the middle of a desert without a living soul for miles around and you made the most beautiful music, would that bring joy to the world? No doubt creating the music with no audience would still bring joy to you, but it wouldn't make a wider impact if there was nobody there to hear it. It would be much better to go to somewhere that has music written into its soul, such as Memphis, for example. So the place is really important. Places have their own, um, as I say, energy blueprint that can support our soul's purpose. So if you believe, for instance, that your purpose 
Uh, the purpose of your music is to help others by bringing them joy and helping them through pain, then having an audience is part of the deal. Playing small does not follow you because you're too shy perhaps to have your music be heard. Playing small does not serve you in following your soul's path, nor does it serve the people whose joy would be enhanced and whose pain would be dissolved by listening to your melodies. The best place to embody your purpose is in a place whose spirit has the energy to fully support you in those endeavours. It's like an invisible friend. In summary, I suppose then, if I could just sum up what I've said, our purpose, our personhood and our places are all bound together in this sort of threefold symbiotic, mutually beneficial relationship. And while many people focus on their mental, spiritual and emotional well-being through self-care and spiritual development, the importance of place is often overlooked in modern society. Yet ancient practices such as Feng Shui speak to us of an understanding that place is important. We, and any work that you do to heal and harmonise the energy in your home or in the wider landscape is a good thing. But the relationship we have with place runs much deeper. I think we have forgotten our connection. And this is largely due to the advancements made in, in, in infrastructure. If we're cold, we have heating. We have instant access to clean water in most Western society just by turning on the tap. In general, homes are well made and they're sturdy and they can withstand adverse weather conditions. In creating builders that buildings that sort of keep us safe and healthy, we have forgotten our spiritual relationship with nature. We have lost contact with the spirit of place. And in doing this, we're not utilising what I believe is an incredible source of energy to raise not only our vibe, but the collective frequency of humanity. Our secular spaces where we live and work have, simply, have become simply just that, places where we live and work. We have no deep connection to a lot of them. I mean, at home we do. And this is why we've separated this sphere um, of home and work. So we don't see a place of work, really, unless it's um, of some kind of religious or spiritual significance. We don't see places of work as being somewhere really important. We see... Nothing sacred in our relationship with secular spaces, really. We may have a little altar at home, but we don't, we think of sacred places as in sacred places, and they are obviously definitely different. But we forget, I think, that there's this link between secular and sacred spaces. We go to sacred spaces to have epiphany moments, to connect to the divine, to give us messages and important information and downloads and things that as a soul we want to achieve. We have to act that out in our secular spaces where we live and work. So, you know, an office is not just an office if that's where you work or your home office if you have a spiritual um, home based business. That's part of the energetic matrix of your business. So we have to take into account the energy of place. And I believe we're missing an important understanding that place really is the stage on which the play of our lives unfolds. We have to, it's the backdrop, it's the scenery, it's the stage on which we stand with our fellow players in the play of our life who enter stage left and exit stage right as they come in and out of our lives. But the places form the stage on which we perform as our life unfolds. Our role within that story is woven together by our presence, our words and our actions and place that the, the place is the stage on which we do that so how we act our actions in our lives are expression of the natural talents and gifts we bring to the world there is no greater joy than our work in the expression of these talents that we're living our soul's purpose in service to others whereas work was once I suppose whereas work was once activities that we engaged in to sustain ourselves and our communities, um, it was therefore geographically aligned with natural resources. You know, what, what natural resources were present to fulfill that work? You know, if we wanted to plant crops to create a thriving society, we don't try to do that on the side of a rocky mountain. 
We build our mills, we used to build our mills next to rivers for their power or windmills where we could catch the prevailing wind, for instance. So location mattered when it came to work because of the natural availability of resources. And now work has sort of been related to the relegated really to just simply the purchase of our time or some level of expertise in which we undertake tasks and activities you know if we're employed dictated by somebody else so we have no control then over our work and we have no control of the places where we do that work we just have to go there to do that task because we're told to so as work has become more mechanized and modernized and all about making stuff or service industries and less about being an actual activity that sustains our life. And it's become simply an exchange really between money and our willingness to do what we're instructed. We have lost our connection to the sacred nature of work itself. And work, uh, this sacred work, connects to place because work was originally part of sustaining our and our communities lives and well-being now i'm not suggesting obviously that we need to some, return to some kind of pre-industrial society but i am suggesting that we would benefit from still considering landscape energy in our lives as a source of support um so there is of course a difference in energy anybody's interested in earth energy there is very much a difference in energy um, of secular spaces where we live and work and sacred spaces. Those are ancient sacred sites, sites of religious or spiritual significance. So I'm sure many of you have visited a site of spiritual or religious significance and felt your spirit lift or a sense of deep connection to source or divinity. And I'm willing to bet that you wouldn't get this feeling in your local supermarket. And the difference lies not only in the purpose for which we use these spaces, but also in their actual geographical location. Secular spaces really of towns and villages, places of work, of, I say arose due to their life sustaining natural resources, places where we could grow food, get water and other materials, where places where we could get timber and rocks to build shelters and pen up animals. Sacred spaces arose due to our innate sense that certain places are special. They have different quality that does more than just meet our basic needs. They meet our soul's needs for a divine connection to something more than ourselves. Now, we know that research shows that sacred sites have electromagnetic fields of energy that differ from non-sacred sites. They have raised levels of electromagnetic frequency, uh, which is in fact created by the geology itself. It's created by the rock formations. It's created by all sorts of things. And then it results in us experiencing these places, sacred spaces, very differently. The changes in the Earth's natural energy alter our neurochemistry and our perception of reality. So we can go to sacred spaces we can connect to something divine. We can find out more about our inner purpose of what we came here to do and how we can add value to the world. What, what is the meaning of my life? And then we take that information back to our homes and places of work and put that knowledge into action in the real world. And this is the, this is the connection, I think, to space, places that's kind of been lost. It's subtle, but it's important. So both secular and sacred spaces have powerful but different roles in helping nurture our body and spirit so we can successfully embody our soul purpose. We can receive divine inspiration at sacred sites, but we act upon that inspiration in our secular spaces. They exist together in a continual feedback loop. And this deep realisation, when you understand the power of place, has the power to change your life. Your home becomes a very important place. The place that you work becomes a very important place because it is the stage on which you are acting out your soul's purpose. And the energy of place has a powerful impact on us. It does affect how we think and we feel because it affects our neurochemistry. 
You have everything at your fingertips to live a life of joy, value, um, fulfillment and service as a gift. Everything is there. We just have to unpick that relationship. And landscape offers us, you know, the gifts of inspiration to, to look at the bigger picture. It offers us the place on which to act out our purpose. And it offers us the sustenance to support our body, mind and soul. So the power of place is really important. It is the stage on which you um, live out your, your soul's purpose. And we come to different places at different epochs in our life. So I would leave you with this sort of soul inquiry question. And that is, what do I want to create in my life? And how is this place supporting me in that creative process? So maybe you're looking to enhance your career. Now, is that career that you're looking for, are you in the right place to do it? Do you need to move or have you moved to follow your career? Um, you know, if you're of your, or maybe you're at the stage in life where you're thinking, oh, I'm buying this home because this is where we want to start a family. Then that is that that's part of your soul's path right now is to go into parenthood. So how is that place supporting you in that? Is it, uh, you know, a nice neighborhood? Is it somewhere where you can see yourself living for many years? It might not be that obvious. It's just that those places will each bring with them unique challenges and opportunities that both encourage you to live out your potential but also highlight things within you they will present challenges to you that of things that you possibly need to work on so as an as an example let me give me an example of this when i was um a child i lived in sort of an extended family um environment where there were um, three generations and that was a there was a lot of um, sort of emotional abuse in that in that environment um, which I didn't realize how at the time you know we we then moved with my mum and my brother and we kind of escaped that and um, moved into a different environment I didn't realize how much that had informed my own behavioral patterns until I found myself married and at that point, I had married and I had moved to a farm and it was literally 500 yards from my childhood home where this emotional abuse had happened. And the emotional abuse was happening again in my marriage in the exact same location. And I found myself sat at the dinner table with my child and my husband. And I found myself in this emotionally abusive environment saying literally the same things that I had heard my own grandmother say to fill these awkward silences, to fill the voids when people were sat there rigid with fear. And I found myself playing the role of my own grandmother. And at the time, you know, when I was a child, I couldn't see why she was doing it. I was confused. And I found myself playing out that exact same scenario, literally 500 yards down the road in a slight, I could literally see my child at home from the farmhouse window. And that place had always been tied up in legalities of boundary, property boundaries. So it was all about boundaries. What will you, what will you let into your world? Who will you let into your world? What will you accept in this space that you call your own? So there are many hidden messages within places that are actually pointing us to, and that was my challenge was boundary. That was pointing me to the fact that I had to develop better boundaries. I had to understand these emotional imprinting that I'd had with the child from childhood about what I was being um, shown to accept. And I didn't realize that was going to play out until I found myself in that relationship. So the, the boundary issue and replaying old patterns occurred within that place to encourage me to assert my boundaries to look at the, the um, sort of scripts that I was running on my life on and my belief systems of my self-worth. And the, and the place was a component part of that learning. So I'm really thankful to that place now. It taught me an awful lot, both those places, even though they were so very close. So when I look at the different, look back at the places you have lived and what occurred to you 
um, in that epoch of your life? What what was it trying to encourage you to do on your soul's journey? What kind of expansion was it encouraging you to do? And what kind of thing was it encouraging you to heal from? Those are the two tricky things that place is involved in. So again, I'll just leave you with that soul question. What do I want to create in my life? And how is this place supporting me in that creative process?